Rahman Makim Shalom. I want to give all praise down and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson, double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops, and salutations to the elect. I want to entitle this quick hit, Keep Praying. Don't stop praying. This is Luke chapter 18, verse 6. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. I'm sorry, let me start at the top. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray, ought always to pray, and not to faint. We must always pray and not faint. Philippians 4 and 6 tells us. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And as we are seeing the hell that this devil is getting ready to bring upon this earth, all right, upon the children of the Lord, we are praying, you know. There's no fun times getting ready to come to this place. Right, and we're praying for the strength to endure. We're praying for the mercy of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to hide us in His pavilion. You know, we're praying to stay with Him. You know, we're praying that the Lord have mercy upon us. Constantly, constantly, constantly praying. As we read on in Luke 18, saying there was in a city a judge. Which feared not God, neither regard of men. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because his widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Right? And ever since Yahweh Shai came on the scene, Yahweh has been avenging us. You know? Through Yahweh Shai, the elect gets the name back. And through the name, the Lord can one again one once again be with us. So not tell us in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, my people will humble themselves and pray unto me. Well, it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray unto me, then I will hear and heal their land. Alright? Esau's in trouble. The land is being healed through the elect. Alright? Whereas what? We understand that Jerusalem is a people before a place. Yahweh Shai even told his disciples that the kingdom of heaven dwelleth in you. He said, why stand ye, you know, it says, I forgot exactly how it goes, but it basically goes into like, why look ye here and look ye there? Know ye not that the kingdom of heaven dwelleth in you? Right? And we know that it's our father's good pleasure to give it to us. You know? So it's important, it's a it's appointed unto us to beg. You know, beg for it. Alright? He gonna give it to us, yeah, but we gotta beg for it. And as we see this pain increasing, we should be praying more and more. <coughs> you know, a good example is our forefather King David. Right? King David always he always prayed. You know, when things seemed rough, when things were uh, hard for him. You know, and we know the scriptures say in Psalms 121 that the Lord, that he neither slumbereth nor sleep, which watch us. So he's always watching. We know he's always listening. Right? Psalms 121 verse 4. Behold, he, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So we know he's always watching. Right? We know he's always watching. So we got to keep praying to him. Psalms 120. 
we could hey, we could be all day speaking about the Psalms. You know the songs that David uh was singing to the Lord in his heart. You know, we see the pain that we we know the pain we feel. We see the pain that's coming. Why not direct that until Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? What the scriptures tell us in um, you know the brother uh, Ishiar. I believe he's the head of the North Carolina camp, one of the Charlotte camp. He brought out the scripture in um, what's that, Sirach thirty-five? Did not the tears run down the cheeks? It says, do not the tears run down the widow's cheeks? Are we not the widow? Are we not without a husband at this point in time? You know, physically. You know, because a husband to a household is... Um, is A husband to a wife is protection. You know? Away from harm, from danger. Yeah, I think about um, how Yahweh Shai told his disciples. He said... um. Basically, like, how he's, because the Pharisees asked you, how was shy? You know, why fast we often, but thy, thy disciples fast not? He said, shall the bridegroom chain while the bride, shall the bridegroom uh, mourn while the bride, while the bride is there? But he's going to go away and then shall they fast? You know, we fast and pray for our protection. But it says, Sirach 35 and 15, do not tears run down the widow's cheeks. And it's not her cry against him that causeth them to fall. All right. When you put, um, you know, uh, wickedness in a fool. When you put particular, uh, you know, vaccinations and uh, hormones to destroy our bodies into the fool. That's something we should be crying about. Right. When we work for 100 percent of our money, but only come out. You know, with 60 or 50 percent, that's something we should be crying about. You know, I think it's is it in the same chapter, or it's in a in a in a book of Sirach where it speaks about um he that the fault of his neighbor is as a man of blood, roughly paraphrasing. You know, this devil didn't draw drew blood, man. All the shit he did to us, man, and and, and it's continuing to do to us. He's looking to oppress the people more. Yuval Noah Harari speaks boldly, all right, as it is, tells us they speak loftily concerning oppression. And we're here. We, we, you know, we feeling this shit, man. So we ought to cry to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. He will not accept any person against the poor. Let me start at Sirach 35 and 13, but we'll hear the prayer of the oppressed. You know, hey, let's jump over to Sirach 4. All right. Sirach 4 and 1, my son, the fraud, not the poor of his living and make not the needy eyes to wait long. Make not a hungry soul sorrowful, neither provoke a man in his distress. Add no more trouble to an heart that is vexed and defer not to give him that is in need. Reject not the supplication of the afflicted, neither turn away thy face from a poor man. Turn not away thy eyes from the needy And give him none occasion to curse thee And you know This Esau then gave us occasion to curse him For what he have done to our forefathers For what he does to us now Alright Creating these different legislations Against us because we're complaining Against his wickedness For if he curse thee In the bitterness of his soul His prayer shall be heard of him that made him Right so again, you know, I, I just did a lesson prior to this lesson, how this place is ripe for destruction. And one of ways we know that is because the elect is crying to the Lord. And the Lord will not despise, you know, a humble and a contrite spirit. But this is Sirach 35 and 13. He will not accept any person against a poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poureth out her complaint. Doth not the tears run down the widow's cheeks? And even if you're not physically crying, you know that your, your, your spirit is, is, is groaning. You know, our spirit is groaning like it says in 2 Corinthians 5. 
you know, with things that can't be uttered. You know, we we, we yearn to shed this 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 body, but we know that's at the appearing of Yahweh Shai. You know, what's that in First John three? The scriptures speak about when he shall appear, we shall we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. You know, we yearn for spiritual powers. We yearn for mercy. Right? That we be able to escape these chains of darkness. We we be able to escape, alright, this um the wicked. Does not the tears run down the widow's cheeks? Is not her <coughs> Is not her cry against them that causes them to fall. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach into the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierce of the clouds, until it come nigh, he will not be comf comforted, and he will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. All right, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, this was a quick hit. Let me, let me finish it off actually For the Lord will not be slack Neither will the mighty be patient toward them Till he have submitted his son to the loins of the unmerciful And repay vengeance to the heathen Till he have taken away the multitude of the proud And broken the sceptre of the unrighteous Till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds And to the works of men according to their devices Till he have judged the cause of his people And made them to rejoice in his mercy Alright the Lord hates to see us like this, but he understands, like it says in James 5, that he has to be patient till all his words uh, come to pass. Mercy is seasonable in a time of affliction as clouds of rain in a time of drought. All right. And um, the scriptures tell us in Lamentations 4 that the cup has passed from us is going to land on him. All right. Hey, so if that, Shalom to the elect.